Welcome to the Alchemical Empress page. I'm your host, Nicola. I wanted to come to you today to talk about the importance of trusting yourself because I want to give you a little bit of a story time on how important that was in a recent situation that I was in and to give a little bit of encouragement for those of you who may be wondering how do you decipher between different voices that's going on and what to trust when you're hearing so much going on out there in YouTube land and, and internet and the whole nine. There are many different people out there, especially now in this time, in this day and age, uh, trying to give esoterical knowledge, giving spiritual knowledge, trying to give you insight, information, and all types of things that um, they're spouting as their truth, right? And uh, I'm probably one of those people that teach and give information and insight uh, as well. But one of the biggest things that I try to always emphasize is the importance of knowing what's going on inside of you and trusting your guttural knowing, your deep instinct, trusting and knowing yourself in all that you do and all that you are um, taking in and processing because only you know what is best for you. And only you know your um, most profound and deepest uh, guidance from the inner world of your, your spiritual team and, and yourself. Um, we sometimes give over that power to other people thinking that those people may know a little bit better than us. And sometimes we have to vet that and make sure that we are in alignment with what's going on in us, despite how credible the resources around us may look. So let me give you a little bit of background and insight on why I'm coming to you this way, uh, just based off of something I just currently went through. And not just currently, but just a couple of times I've, I've gone through something um, similar and I had to back up and realize that what was going on in me was the thing that I needed to trust. I am doing, I'm re, I'm actually right now doing a, an ebook and hopefully I'll have it out sometime soon about my time of transitioning out of the church after 40 years of preaching the gospel. But what happened when I left the church and I left religion, I freed myself, right? I, 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 I freed myself from a level of bondage that I didn't even recognize I was in at that time. I gave so much of my time, my energy and my effort over to religion. Uh, I, I lost myself, I lost my health. I lost a lot of things along the way because I overgave. And what Christianity did to me in particular was it took an already dysfunctional, people-pleasing person um, and it basically exploited my people pleasing. It exploited my uh, childhood issues that I had within me. And uh, because it promoted work, 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 work. You know, you're working for the kingdom, you're giving to the kingdom, and you're giving to the Lord and all of this stuff. And so uh, I was um, pushed to the point in, in many different directions where I was just really just tired, right? Um, but I was constantly, uh, trained to keep giving despite how I felt because, uh, you, you were trained to believe that what others needed and what God needed was more important than what you needed. Uh, just, just bad training in many, many ways. Um, so anyway, um, coming out of this whole situation, I realized that I was exhausted in a way that I did not he even know that I was exhausted uh, spiritually. But then I went through this transformational space of learning about the great mother, going on this ayahuasca trip, like I, I've talked about in previous videos, going to Costa Rica and learning more about the great mother and, and then coming back and being tested on many different levels in that and then finally hearing deep within my spirit, it's time for me to come east. And I was living in central uh, uh, US, I mean, well, you know, Southwest in Texas at the time. So I know in me and in me, 
there's nothing in me that wanted to come back to the East. But I know when my spirit and my spiritual team has something better in store for me, despite what my mind and my heart might want at that time. And so when generally when that happens, the doors open in ways that I don't have to push too hard because it makes the way for me on, on many different uh, levels. And I know that I'm going in the right direction when my spiritual team, my most high, uh, the, the most high creator in my life is speaking to me. I know automatically that I have to do something different. And so even though it may be contrary to what I want, when I know it's the spirit working for me and with me and in me, I have to move on that. And the doors are generally open for me to make those moves. And so that's trusting the God that is in me, that's speaking to me, despite my, maybe my uh, mind at that time, the spirit deep within me knows what's best for me. So it could be something I want or don't want, but if I'm being pushed a certain way, I got to go that particular way. So that's one way of knowing that um, I have to trust that that deep guttural knowing, despite what my brain might be saying sometimes. So I go east and I begin, I decide to uh, go to the village, um, Oyukanji, uh, Tanji village. And it's an African village. And I sit with uh, the, the statue of Ola Kun. For some reason, I'm drawn, I'm pulled in that direction. And so I go the, in that direction and I start hearing, get off the coast, daughter, the water's going to rise. And so um, I move accordingly because it agrees with my spirit to do so. And all of that traveling that I did to get to where I am was a deep need, a deep knowing, a voice that, that I've known since I was three years old that was guiding me, um, a deep guttural instinct that I'm going in the right direction despite the fact that I'm, I might not be clear on everything that is uh, the reason why I'm, I'm making this move, right? So because I am so grateful for the, um, the insight that I've gotten from the voices of deities I was not familiar with before coming out of my Christian background, like I may have heard about uh, Yoruba, I might have heard about even some of the Metanetra and, and Kemet and things of that nature. Um, I don't necessarily remember knowing their names as I'm getting guidance until recently when I'm being uh, introduced to their names now. So it's Yemaya, there's um, Olukun uh, speaking to me about the water and I'm like, oh, okay. So that's, that's what I'm hearing, okay. So in my quest to try to learn more about Ifa and my quest to learn more about you know, this, this, uh, knowing, uh, this, uh, guidance that I've gotten, um, you know, I start going to like the morning prayer for, um, one of the ladies that hold the Ifa prayer in the morning. It's, uh, every four, every four days or so. And, uh, prior to that, I had gotten some Reiki done by her. So I trusted her judgment on a lot of different things. And in the session, it was an amazing session, but she was like, you know, uh, if I is calling you, um, you know, uh, have you thought about getting initiated and things of that nature? And I'm like, um, no. And I don't really know who you're talking to because whoever is guiding me is telling me to rest. So I would, then it wouldn't be telling me to, um, to, uh, do something that is calling me to be in more spaces of responsibility right now. So anyway, I let that go. And so recently I was uh, in another prayer session and um, she was having a divination, uh, what was it, a reading for like 1111. And so it was a half price off deal. And I was like, you know, okay, I think I'll go ahead and do that just, you know, to see what was up. And so she was going to do the work and then, and then email us back and, uh afterwards, if you ever done something and right afterwards, you're like, why did I do that? Because I really don't need to do that. Each and every morning I get up 
And when I when I have my morning coffee and I sit in my chair, I open my journal and I divine for myself. I really don't need other people to do that for me. But for whatever reason, I decided to go with that. And and so I got the reading back and the reading was like, um, you're off path uh, in order to get in alignment. You need to uh, do this offering and that offering and you need to do this and that. And I was like, wait a minute. Mm -mm. Nah, mm -mm. listen, what I'm off path for is trying to trying to see if I fit with another religion when I've already freed myself. So that, and this is not against anybody's religion. I hope that you guys read what I'm saying. This is about Nicola. This is not about anybody, any religion, any situation or circumstance that's working for somebody else because it's working perfectly for her. But for me, this is what I'm talking about, the importance of trusting yourself. For me, I needed to free myself. And I did. And I was tired. And I didn't need anything else to take its place right now. I don't know what I'm going to be doing a year from now, but I know at this time, my spiritual team gave me a strong confirmation the day, the morning, the morning of that uh, reading that I got to sit still, to spend time alone, to listen to my own voice and to rest because it's something I never had the privilege of being able to do for a very long time. Even when I wasn't working, I was working. I'm always doing something. Even now, I'm putting out a video for somebody to uh, see if it'll help somebody down the road with whatever they're going through. So I was always doing something. And my spiritual team was like, sit down, be still, spend time with yourself, rest. I needed time to hear my own voice. So I kind of detached from everybody and everything that I know and love so that I can have that space to pull my own energy back into myself and feel my own feel my own vibration for a moment because I was taking on the world. I've taken on too much stuff. So when I got this uh, divination uh, done, I was like, whoa, everything in me knows that if I'm off path, it's off path if I'm trying to go in that direction because somebody is saying that I need to take the hand of Ifa and I need to do this and I need to do that. That's too much. I I am I'm too tired looking. I'm tired looking at this. I can't even I can't even do that. I'm too tired looking at this, right? So, you know, I talked to my husband about this and I was like, you know, I, something on just not, is not resonating me with me in this whole situation. So, I'm going to sleep on it, see how I feel in the morning, but nothing <clears throat> feels like uh anything that uh is resonating with me because because if it was for me to take the hand of Ifa right now, if it was for me to uh, get myself into another religion, even if I didn't want to do it per se, like I didn't really want to come back east, I would know instinctively within my soul that it's something that I have to do for right now because it's going to fare better for me later. And it always works out that way. Like coming east, Initially, in my brain didn't work because I had such a hard time 30 years ago east. But now it's one of the, been one of the most uh, beautiful, peaceful experiences for me to reconnect with nature, myself, and uh, have the space that I need to have some peace. So if I were to have trusted this person's divination and her connection over my own, who knows where I would be trying to appease something that does not resonate deep within my spirit. I hope that I'm making myself clear. I feel like I might be rambling a little bit, but it made me extraordinarily grateful for the opportunity that I had just the morning of to have like a certain experience of hearing from my own spiritual team and writing down because I write, I write generally my portion of what I'm going to write in a journal and then I sit and I channel, right? And when I was channeling, I started getting a vision of uh, a, a mentor of mine that passed away um, 
of his time of me sitting with him as he was crossing over to the other side. I've done a lot of work as a, like, I guess I've just not heard the term of debt doula, um, but I was a chaplain. So I, I, I guess I've been doing, I've done a lot of work. You could call it a debt doula if you, if you see it in a comedic way, but I've watched a lot of people cross over in the work that I've done. And, but in this particular instance, it was somebody that I knew, cared for, and was, um, there to, um, to sit with him as he was about to enter into the other side. And so uh, as I thought about the fact that he wouldn't allow anybody else to pray for him but me and all this stuff, I don't know why he came across my mind so heavily. But later on, after I came out of my quiet time, I came in my office and I started pulling out books and I was like, oh, I need to do this. I need to read that. I need to do that. And all of a sudden my mind started spinning and I heard spirit said, didn't I tell you to rest? And so I was like, I did have a book set that said, when I, do you feel guilty when you rest or something like that? And I was like, I wonder what that little book is. I looked up and the, my, my eyes landed straight on that book. I was like, oh my God, I don't even know where I got this little book from. I opened the book and I realized it was a book that my mentor had given me. And I was like, wow, that's when you know you're listening to your spiritual team as opposed to uh, all these outside, uh, all these outside voices that's trying to sway you to the left or to the right. My spiritual team was very clear about what my assignment was in this whole process of me moving, which was to sit still, heal, restore, get my own life back together again so that I can come back fully into my coaching, which I am a professional, a professional listener. I am not a person that does readings for people in that way. And so, um, you know, all of these, all of these voices that's trying to get me to come in and learn to do this and do that. I'm like, that wasn't for me because I'm called to do something different. So I, I'm putting this video out because I know that there's so many voices out there right now. And there's like so much confusion and so much to process. And if you are trying to take in a lot and you don't know where to start, you're trying to learn a lot. It's, it seems like you, you know, you're just waking up and you don't know, you know, what to do. This is what I would advise you to do and, and, and advise you to take, to take heed of. Anything that pulls you away from yourself, question it. Anything that pulls you away from your inner knowing, your inner self, your inner spirit that doesn't allow you to go within and trust yourself, uh, go in with and, 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 and heed your own voice or the God within you, question that. Secondly, uh, it's not good to take in too much information. Sometimes take in enough that you can process and, and if it's information that you need to use, then begin practice utilizing that information as opposed to constantly packing in, packing in, packing in more and more and more information because there is so much out there. That's why I'll do a little video here and there on a the great mother. And then I'll sit back for a while and I put out some videos like this because it is a lot to process, you know? And so don't allow anybody to push you beyond your limitations, push you outside of your own voice and question anybody that comes in like they're a teacher or a helper or whatever, and they don't give you the wherewithal to go within trusting yourself. Because anything that's helping you should always lead you back to you. Why? Because ultimately, you know what's best for yourself. Sometimes there are blockages in the way that cause you not to be able to hear your own voice, but ultimately, if we can work on undoing those blockages, you know you. And so everything has to lead back to you trusting you. And anything that doesn't, question that. Question that. So for those of you who are new into this awakening process, Please don't overwhelm yourself with information and people and situations and circumstance. 
Please take time to listen to what really resonates with your spirit. And if it doesn't, let it go. It may not even be time for you to take that on just yet. Maybe it is for you to take on, but not at this time. Maybe it is never for you to take that on. Uh, some of us are more advanced than we actually recognize uh, ourselves to be, but people that sound more professional lead us into thinking that we don't have something we already had. See, I already knew that I had an intimate uh, understanding of the most high and that voice that has led me since I was a little child. And so I really don't need divination like that, but you know, I was trying some new stuff, right? But ultimately, because I do know me and I do know my creator, I was able to shake off that which was not working for me and say, no, 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 um, that ain't, that's not working for me because any spiritual team that is not in alignment with my spiritual team is not the, the spiritual team I need to be working with right now because my spiritual team know how much I have put out into the world and how tired I am. And that is my season to rest a little bit where somebody else, they may be amping up and it's time for them to go, 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 you know, but only, you know, what is best for you and only, you know, what is resonating with your spirit. So that's why I would say, take what you need and leave the rest. If it's not all for you, don't take that in. If it's too much for you, stop process and let the rest go for now. And bring yourself back to it when you need to come back to it. But don't overwhelm yourself with information, people's voices, opinions, situations, circumstances, whatever it may be. And not take the time to listen to you. Your voice, the God in you, the spirit, the most high, the creator, however you want to call it, that, that, that loving uh, authority that governs us all, that tethers us all. That knowing in you is enough. And generally when I do coaching sessions with people, when I am working, I tell people all the time, you already have the answers, but something may be blocking you. And my job is to help you unblock whatever it is that's blocking you so that you can hear your own voice again, because you know what you need for yourself. Trusting yourself is of the utmost importance, especially right now, because we are in such a major turning point and the world is insane. The world is insane. And so if you take too, if you drink too much of this in right now, you will drown. So you got to know when enough is enough, when you are swimming outside the bounds, the bounds of yourself, when you need to pull the reins back in. When you need to sit still and hear your own voice and hear your own spiritual team, you got to know that the important the, the importance of trusting yourself in this day and age right now, because it is of the utmost importance. And people who sound so much more credible can sway you off if you're not careful. So be conscious of when something is causing you not to trust you. Be conscious of when something is pulling you off your own center and be courageous enough to stop it and pull yourself back in and trust your inner knowing and your inner self because you really do have the answers within you. That's pretty much all I came here to talk about today. I hope that everyone is having an amazing day. And until next time, I ask that you all just. Sit still, take a deep breath in, breathe out, and find your own peace. Blessings.